Are you in SHS and wondering how you can learn and pass the examination with no stress? With our experienced facilitators, Joy Learning promises you an ultimate TV classroom experience. We have Dennis Amuba, your English facilitator, Evans Ode, your core mathematics facilitator, and George Loco, your integrated science facilitator, to take you through the core subjects. Annette Kapi Albert, your physics facilitator, Osei Kwame Amwating, your biology facilitator, Adriana Abing Yeboa, your government facilitator, Stella Jima Lobby, your literature facilitator, Afari Judith Ofuyua, your cost accounting facilitator, Ernest Walter, your economics facilitator, Gottlieb Adade, the financial accounting facilitator, Frank Edu Asare, your history facilitator, Wisdom Agbesinyale, your chemistry facilitator, Samuel Sechi Adu, Bogao Boga, your geography facilitator, Frank Ahima, your general agriculture facilitator, Rosin Danso, your elective math facilitator, Kojo Ousu Apia, your GKA facilitator, and Felix Tinkran, your elective ICT facilitator, will take you through the elective subjects. Our TV facilitators' assiduous approach to teaching ensures learners never miss any key pieces of information. Remember, it is free. If you miss our TV lessons, you can access them on our YouTube channel at Joy Learning. For more updates on our programs, follow us on our social media handles, Twitter and Facebook at Joy Learning TV and Instagram at Official Joy Learning TV. Study with us now. Choose Joy Learning. Joy Learning. Keep learning. Hello. Welcome to your favorite integrated science revision show for SHS students on Joy Learning. I am George Loco, your facilitator from St. Mary's Senior High. At this juncture, I'm going to entreat you to call a friend to call a friend so that we can learn and interact with a concept on organic chemistry. In our last session, we considered organic chemistry, the part one, and we also did some questions and answers. Similarly, today we shall be looking at this concept in two folds. We shall look at organic chemistry and then as, uh, as part of the second part, we'll be trying our hands on questions and answers. So call a friend to call a friend and let us have this wonderful journey. So like I said, we'll be treating Integrated Science Organic Chemistry 2. And to help us do this, let us look at our learning objectives. So at the end of this lesson, you, my favorite learners, will be able to name a given arcane structure and also draw the arcane structure from the name. State the uses of arcane. Define arcanes, name them, and state their uses. And if time permits, we'll be looking at define arcane, name them, and state their uses. And the fifth is define arcanals, name them, and state their uses. So today's class is going to be a packed one. We'll try to cover a lot of those topics or the subtopics in within a short time. So I will entreat you to call a friend to call a friend, but should you miss or you miss the previous class, you can go to YouTube at Joy Learning TV and you can assess all the videos there in addition to other videos from other facilitators. So right away we want to start. In our last lesson, we said that organic chemistry is the study of carbon compounds except carbon four oxide, carbon two oxide, cyanide, metallic carbonate, and metallic hyd uh, hydrogen carbonate. All these substances that I mentioned are considered to be inorganic. So from there, we try looking at the various branches of organic chemistry. And we said these compounds that we study under organic chemistry are what we call the organic compounds. So we divided the organic compounds into various classes, and we said we can have hydrocarbons. So as the name suggests, you have two elements coming together to form the word hydrogen 
and carbon. So we call them hydrocarbons. And we said these are compounds containing hydrogen and carbon only. So if you have a compound that contains hydrogen, carbon, and any other element, it will not be considered as a hydrocarbon. From there, we said that hydrocarbons can be divided into so many classes. And the class of compound will determine their properties. And that means that they will have their own names, what, we, what is similar to our system of naming, like our surname. So we call them a class because they exhibit certain similar chemical characteristics. Their physical properties may differ. So based on that, we said we have our cane, our king, and our kind. For those of you doing electric chemistry, we have the cycloarcanes and cycloarcanes. We could also have benzene. But for the integrated, we're looking at our canes, our kings, and our kinds. So we went on to say that our canes are a class of compound containing carbon and hydrogen only, and they are they have a general molecular formula of CnA2n plus 2, where n is the number of carbon in the compound. So from there, you can generate the formula of so many compounds. And as a result of that, we said that the simplest arcane is methane. So we drew some of the structures, and we also spoke about their chemical properties as well. As we did their physical properties, and we said they have low melting point low boiling point, low viscosity, low flash point. We mentioned all these. They are soluble in nonpolar solvents. Today, we want to center our attention on the nomenclature of arcanes. Nomenclature in science simply means system of naming, system of naming. So the nomenclature of arcanes will mean the system of naming arcanes. It is based on the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, what we call in a short form IUPAC. All right, IUPAC. And the rules of IUPAC nomenclature relates the name of the compound with its molecular structure. So because there are so many compounds in or and organic chemistry, the name of these compound comes from the structure. So by just looking at the structure, you can name the compound. And from the name, you can equally draw the structure. So in this system, every name consists of a root name. A root name, like the parent name, or in our systems, like our surname, or a parent chain name with a suffix and a prefix name. So you are going to do some counting of carbons in the compound, and that is going to be the parent chain. Then you also have a suffix, whether it's going to be an arcane, an arcane, a kind, or any of those uh, organic compounds. Or you could also have the parent chain having some other structures attached. And those structures are what we call substituent. Substituent. I'm sure the last time you remember we spoke about locants. If you miss that class, like I said, you can go on YouTube at Joy Learning TV and assess them. The naming of arcanes follows a set of systematic rules. Just like in a normal human system, your names are given based on rules. You don't just get up and they are giving you any name based on um, what somebody feels. There are rules we use in and naming people. Similarly, if you want to name an arcane, we follow laid down rules. We don't just use arbitrary names, even though we used to have those old names many years ago. Now all of them have phased out, and we are using the IUPAC system of naming compounds. So in my earlier submission, I mentioned parent chain or root name. So let us look at what we mean by parent chain. By definition, it is the longest and continuous carbon chain in the organic molecule. So if you are presented with a given organic compound and you can count the number of carbons, the structure or the chain that has so many carbons in it forms what we call the parent chain, also known as the root chain, all right? So they are also called the root carbon chain, and they are named by counting the number of carbons and using the appropriate prefix. So that means that if you count the number of carbons and you get a particular number, you have to use a given prefix. So if you get one, there's a name given to one. Two, there's a name given to two. So we're looking at the prefixes very soon. The met, the et, the prop, the but, and on and on. The suffix ane is then added to the prefix name. So after counting the number of carbons in the compound, you use the appropriate prefix. And because it is an arcane, 
the surface a n e is added to that prefix giving it the name arcane so you are going to have the arc and the a n e making it arcane the table below shows a list of carbon chain the names of their prefixes and the name of the parent chain we are going to look at the parent chain must be continuous and the number of carbon determine the prefix so let us start right away showing on your wonderful screen um, is this three column table and for the first column we have number of carbon and then on the second we have structure of the arcane parent chain remember the structure is coming from the general molecular formula c and a 2 n plus 2 and the name of the arcane will be given so i'll explain as well the prefix and then the a and e which makes it an arcane so we start right away arcanes in general we said they have the formula c and a 2 n plus 2. so if you have the first arcane having n equals 1 then it means you have the formula c1 h2 times 1 plus 2 and that makes it c h4 so you notice that the first arcane containing one carbon will have the general formula c h4 now in organic chemistry if you have a one carbon compound we use the prefix met meaning one met meaning one and because it is classified under arcanes it will bear the same name in in so if you join the two it becomes methane methane similarly if you go to the second carbon compound that is the compound containing two carbons in a straight chain we will have ch3 ch3 or better still if you are using the cn a2n plus 2 formula you will get c2 h6 all right c2 h6 and a c2 compound is called et et that is eth and because they all belong to the set of compounds we call arcanes with the surface a n e it becomes ethane ethane all right so we we have ethane if you move further you will notice that we have a ca3 ca2 ca3 or if you condense the structure it becomes c3 h8 c3 H, H that is C3 and then you have H two times three making six plus two so you have eight and a three carbon structure straight chain um, structure is called prop so if you add the A and E to be it becomes propane or propane we move on to the fourth carbon and for the fourth carbon we use the prefix built so if you add the A and E to it, it becomes butane. So I'm, I'm sure by now you are beginning to catch the, the, the method. So a four carbon compound will have the condensed structure C4H10. All right, so it becomes built and the name becomes butane. Now, if you move on to the structure, that contains five carbons in a straight chain. All right, whether they could be branched, but if you count them continuously, you have five carbons. We call them pent. So if you add the surface A N E to it, it becomes pentane. Remember the condensed structure, or the condensed formula for pentane will now become C5 H12. All right, C5 H12 because you have C N H2 N plus 2. So you have C5 H2 times 5, making 10 plus 2. That is how come I got my 12 here. So if you go to the safe carbon compound in a straight chain, six will be called hex. All right. So if you add the A N E to it, it becomes hexane. So we have hexane. And if you want to write a condensed structure, since it is a six carbon compound, you have C6H14. All right. C6H14. And we call it hex. And if you add the A N E to it, it becomes hexane. So I'm sure by now you're beginning to pick the rhythm all right so you have met then you have et then you have prop then you have built then move to paint move on to hex so from hex which is six we move on to the seventh carbon compound in a straight chain and we call it hep so hep with the a n e becomes heptane and remember hep will be c7 h16 c7 
7 times 2 gives you 14, and 14 plus 2 gives you 16. So we have carbons in the straight chain, and we call them parent chain. They are the longest and continuous carbon chain in an organic compound, all right? And when you add the suffix to it, you have the class of compound. If you have a prefix and other things to it, then you have the full uh, name. Remember we said the structure relates to the name, and the name can also produce the structure. So we move on to the eighth carbon compound. H will be called oct, all right? Will be called oct. So octane, all right? We have octane. And remember, it is going to be C8. We have C8. All right, so we have C8H18. All right, so 8 times 2 gives you 16, plus 2 gives you 18. So we call it oct, and it keeps going. So the ninth one becomes known, so we have no name. All right, the tenth one becomes deck, so we have decane. 11, on deck, so we have on decane. And then 12 becomes do deck, so it becomes do decane. I have given you quite a number of them, all right? So here you have 13, and there you have 14. So 11 gives you on the cane, and 12, you have do the cane. 13, we add tri to the deck. Tri means three. So if you add a three to the 10, it gives you 13, so we call it tri the cane. If you move on to 14, you have tetra the cane, all right? Tetra deck, that is four plus 10. That gives you tetra decane. 15 should give you penta decane. And 16, you have hexa decane, hepta decane, octa decane, nona decane. And then you have ecosane. 20 is ecosane. So we can keep going on and on and on. But at the integrated science level, the carbons that they bring are just few. All right, that is why we're giving you the list. So if you miss, you can go online, like I said earlier, uh, at uh, Joy Learning TV, at YouTube, and then watch the entire video over and over again. So let us look at how to name our canes. And we said these rules that we use in naming our canes stems from the IUPAC set of rules. So we have to look at the rules for naming our canes. The first rule simply says that identify the longest and continuous carbon chain and name it as the parent chain. So you'll be given a molecule. So many carbons here and there, so many hydrogens, see so many starches. Relax, don't panic at all. Look at the trend in the molecule. Count the number of carbons in the chain. It means that for a given molecule, you can find so many chains. So the one that gives you the highest number of carbon becomes the parent chain. So we want to consider the molecule below and identify the parent chain. So in our next slide on your screen, we have a molecule. When you see these molecules, don't panic. The names are very easy. If you take your time and go through the steps, you can easily name them. So for this molecule, we have so many carbons, and then you also have other structures like the chloro and the amino. Then you will see some, I have placed them in colors for a reason. In this structure, you'll be able to identify four chains, all right? What are these chains? So we can start from the left and count the carbons to the right. And if you do so, you will get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So counting from the left to the right or from the right to the left, you will get a C8 compound, a C8 compound. But if you look at the structure carefully, you can also get other structures. Let us look at them. We can do the counting from the top so that we have these, all right? And if you check, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is going to be a C9 chain. You notice that for one compound, we have already identified two chains. So identifying the chain sometimes could be um, tricky. You need to take your time and identify them. Now, if you look at it further, you will still get another chain. That is from the right-hand side towards the left. If you count again, you will get nine carbons. So this is also going to give us 
and nine carbon stacked up. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if we have nine carbons, let us check if we have other structures. Then we'll settle on which one is the longest and continuous carbon chain. So by looking at this, we can also see another structure. All right, so for the purposes of identifying that structure, I've cleaned the various lines. So here we have one carbon, two carbon, and then it goes, it climbs up again, and then we have that. So we are going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So below the structure, we have, we have indicated that this structure contains four identifiable chains. The first one will be a C8 that is from the normal straight one in the red. Then you can have a C9 starting from the top and then continuing from the right, or also from the top on the right and continuing to the left. And the last one is where you start from the top, you descend down, go further right, climb up, and then you go right. It's quite cumbersome, but um, it's very easy if you take your time and you do it. So since this is our longest and continuous carbon chain, we are going to call it the parent chain. All right, so this will be our parent chain. And for this set of carbon chains, it means that the C10 is what we are going to use as our parent chain chain. The parent chain is the structure with the highest number of carbons. Hence, it is the C10 chain which we shall call the parent chain. And the parent arcane chain is therefore the cane. Remember, not too long ago, we were looking at the prefaces and then we add the A and E suffix to make it the arcane. So I said that if you have a 10 carbon um, chain molecule, it will be called DEC. So if you add the A and E, it becomes the cane. And that means that for this molecule that you have splashed on your screen, the highest and continuous carbon chain contains 10 carbons, and we are going to call the parent chain the cane, the cane, as shown on your screen. So we have the cane. Now you have been able to identify the parent chain. You will notice that it is not all the structures that were in the molecule that, con that contributed to the parent chain. There were structures outside which we didn't consider. And those structures outside that we didn't consider will be called the substituent. Will be called the substituent. So we see that a substituent is a non-hydrogen atom or group of atoms attached to an organic parent chain that determines the physical and chemical properties of the organic molecule or of the molecule. So we were given a structure. We've been able to pick out which part of the molecule forms the parent chain. The part which didn't constitute the parent chain will be called the substituent. Remember, it is a non-hydrogen atom, so we cannot add hydrogen, all right? We are looking at any other atom ap or any other structure apart from the hydrogen. They are the structures in organic molecules other than the parent chain. So it means that when you identify the parent chain, any other thing there becomes a substituent. So in the example that we gave earlier, that is a, the example um, I was using to identify the parent chain. It has also been presented on this slide. Since we identified this part of the molecule, the one in blue, as our parent chain, any other thing, all right, apart from this parent chain, will be called a substituent. And you notice that outside this parent chain, what we have are these structures. So it means that the CL here, what we call chloro will be called a substituent. This hat, what we call the methyl, will be a substituent because it's not part of the parent chain. And then you also notice that on the right hand side also, there is another substituent. For, so for this molecule, we have three substituents. And you notice that below the molecule, there is another one in green here. So we have identified how many substituents? Four, isn't it? The first one, the second one, the third, and the fourth. So we said that the CH3, the CL, and then the NH2, as well as the last CH3, are the substituents. We said the substituent is a non-hydrogen atom or group of atoms attached to an organic parent chain that determines the physical and chemical properties of that organic molecule. 
There are two main types of substituent, and we can classify them as either organic. So we have organic substituent, that is, they contain carbon. Okay. Then we have the inorganic ones, other elements other than carbon. So let us look at the inorganic substituent. All right, inorganic substituent. So these are non-carbon atoms or group of atoms attached to an organic parent chain. Below are examples of substituents and their names. So now you know how to name the parent chain. We are now coming to learn how to name the substituent. And if you're able to name the substituent, you join the name of the substituent to the parent chain, and voila, you have the name of the compound. So let's start. So for the inorganic substituent, there are quite many. But for the integrated science, we will limit ourselves, all right? So we have an NH2. We saw NH2 in the molecule. And when you see NH2, we call it amino. Amino. I hope it rings a bell. Amino acid. So anytime you hear of amino, remember there's an NH2 um, substituent somewhere. Then if you have NO2, we call it nitro. Nitro. So any anytime you see NH2, you name it as amino. Anytime you see NO2, you call it nitro. And if you have CN, all right, we call it cyano. All right, we call it cyano. But the science student, there is a structure, there's a functional group for the nitriles, alkanonitriles. So in addition to the ones that we have done earlier, we want to look at other inorganic substituents. And you find them under what we call the halogen, all right? The set of elements on the periodic table having seven or 17 electrons on the outermost cell. And they come in the form of chlorine, chlorine, bromine, acetine. Acetine is radioactive, so we don't normally consider it when it comes to compound formation. But chlorine, chlorine, and bromine and iodine, you find them in organic compounds. Anytime you see a halogen, they are called halo. So we see halogen. We've, re we've, re we've removed the last three, and we are keeping only the O, so it becomes halo. All right, so we have the halogen becoming halo. Halogen changes to halo, all right? So if you have chlorine, the last two or three letters, you take it out and replace it with the O. It becomes fluoro, all right? It becomes fluoro. Chlorine changes to become fluoro. Chlorine then changes to, be to chloro. Then you can have bromine changing also to bromo. And then iodine would therefore change to what? Iodine. So we have fluoro, chloro, bromo, and iodine. And this means that anytime you see these structures as substituents on compounds, you call them by these names. We have amino, nitro, and then I said we have cyano. Now we've added fluoro, chloro, bromo, and iodine. Let us look at the organic substituents, the organic substituents. Well, these are substituents that contains carbon and hydrogen. Examples include the alkyl group. So you find them in the form of carbon and hydrogen attached to the parent chain. After identifying your parent chain, you still see some carbons and hydrogen, all right, attached to the parent chain. And we call them the organic substituents. And they bear the name alkyl group, alkyl group. So these are substituents with the general formula CnH2n plus 1. Alkyl group, they are actually part of an organic chain with the general formula CnH2n plus 2. They are just one hydrogen shy or short of what? Um, that of the arcanes. All right. The straight ones are named just like the arcanes, except the suffix ane of the arcanes are replaced by a yl. Hence, the name changes from arcane to alkyl, all right, from arcane to alkyl. So if you have, for example, a CH4, we call this methane. I hope you remember. So we have methane. But if you find a CH3, all right, because it is one hydrogen short of the arcane, we replace the ANE here with the YL, and it becomes methyl, all right, it's methyl. So we have methane as a an, an arcane, and then we have methyl as a substituent. All right, so let us move on to 
our next slide, and we are going to play with them, just like we did in the case of the parenting, all right, methane, ethane, propane, butane, the same thing. The only thing you do is you replace the A N E part of the molecule of the arcane with the Y L. Very simple, isn't it? Well, so we move on. So name of carbon, sorry, number of carbon, then you have structure of the alkyl subsequent, all right. Then we have name of the arcane. So it becomes name of what? Archaeal. So we will have the name of the archaeal. So we we'll take the arcane and replace the last two or three letters of the name with the archaeal. All right. So we take we use the archaeal. All right. So we said a one carbon compound, a one carbon straight chain arcane we call met. It will have the prefix met. If you add A N E to it becomes methane. But if it is a substituent, then we no longer add A N E because it is part of a it is part it's a branch or part of an organic compound, not a molecule on its own, right? Not a parent chain. So we'll call it methyl. Methyl. So if it is a C2 structure, all right. So if remember this one is a C3, it's a C2 becomes C2H5, isn't it? So we have C2. H5, and we shall call this one the ethyl, a two carbon structure called ethyl. So if it is a three carbon compound, we'll call it propyl. So we have prop changing to propyl. If it is a four carbon structure, we we'll call it built. Built. We said if you add A and E, it becomes butane. But if you replace the A and E there with a YL, it becomes butyl. So we have butyl, you have pentyl. You have hextyle, hextyl meaning six, hex, six. Then since it's a structure attached to a parent chain, it becomes hextyle, all right? So you have hextyle, and from six, you go to seven, heptyle. So H will be what? Octyle, nunyle, decyl, on decyl, to decyl, and on and on and on. All right. So we have been able to identify the longest and continuous carbon chain. We've named it as our parent chain. And we said any other structure attached to the parent chain will be called a substituent. We have also been able to identify the substituent, either organic or inorganic, and we have equally named them. The next we say is that name the substituents attached to the parent chain. So after identifying the substituents, you don't just identify it and leave it. You have to name the substituent. In our example above, the parent chain has the name the cane. We were able to arrive at the name the cane because it contains 10 carbon in a chain. I'm sure you remember that structure that, that went like this. Okay. So we call it um, the cane. The parent chain will be called the cane. However, those structures attached to the decay, they were not part of the parent chain. We said will be called substituents. And now that we know what the substituents are, we will have to name them. All right, because we now know that we have two types, the inorganic and organic. And since we now know how to name the inorganic and organic, let us start right away and name them, all right, with the example that we were given earlier. So the names of these substituents are, remember, we were given organ an organic compound. We've moved on, so I've repasted the, the structure here so that we can still look at it. So we said this is our parent chain. All right, so the parent chain goes like this. And then we went on to say that any other thing apart from the parent chain, like these ones, the ones are placed in those circles, will be called the substituent. So we are going to pick each substituent, and then we name them. CA3, from what we have learned earlier, will be called methyl. Remember, methane. So we replace the, y, the AN with the YL, it becomes methyl. So we have two methyls because in this structure, we have this as a methyl, and then we have that as a methyl. That is why you see this name and that name appearing. So that name has appeared twice because we have that structure recurring. So we are going to call it a methyl and another methyl. So first, identify the longest and continuous carbon chain. Any other thing apart from the parent chain will be called the substituent. Now, identify the substituent and you name them. And the names given to these structures will be the methyl. The next one here, which is a Cl, we know it will be what? Chlorine. So we'll name it as what? Chloro. All right. Bromine will be called bromo. Iodine will be called iodine. So here we are going to name the Cl 
as chloro. All right, we'll name it as chloro. And I'm sure you've not forgotten your aminate. So we have aminate. So we have been able to identify the longest and continuous carbon chain. We named it as what? The chain. We have also identified or figured out the substituents or those structures other than the parent chain. And we have seen that their name comes in the form of chloro, amino, then you have the methyl, all right? The first one is a methyl, then you have the chloro, amino, and another methyl. Let us look at the next one. So here you've identified the parent chain, okay? You have also been able to identify the substituent. Check. Now you have named the substituent. What do you do next? The next we say is that number the carbons in the compound starting from one end of the molecule which is closer to a substituent. Remember, we're just given a molecule. We identify the parent chain. We are interested in knowing where each substituent is located because we said that the structure of the molecule relates to its name and the name also relates to the structure. It means that if you have the structure, you'll be able to give us the name. When you are given the names, you can draw the structure. Very simple. So that's what we are going to do. In order to know where every substituent is located, what we call the locant, who has to give numbers to the carbons in the parent chain. But the rule says that, yes, number the carbons in the parent chain, but always start from one end of the molecule that is closer to a substituent. For the molecule that we were given earlier, we have again displayed them on a nice screen. You see that we have two numbering systems I've displayed here. We have the numbering from the left, that is the top left to the right top. Then we also have it from the right top to the top left. Let's just go through it. So we can have this numbering, that is one. Then from there, you come down to the carbon number two, carbon number five, six, seven, eight, then climb up again to nine to 10. And remember, we are doing the numbering from left to right, okay? So we have from left to right. Now, we can also do the numbering. In chemistry, numbering can be done in so many ways. It's allowed, you can start from the left, you can start from the right, but the rule is that start from one end that is closer to a substituent, that is simple. If you start from a, a, a side of the molecule that is far away from a substituent, the name will be wrong. So always look for the longest and continuous carbon chain Start from the end of the molecule that is closer to a substituent. I hope it is simple. So let's look at the other structure we have here. So we have two numbering system, numbering system A and numbering system B. So for the numbering system B, we decided to do the numbering from left or right to the, uh, from right to the left. So we started from the top right, came down, went to the left, climb up again. So we have this numbering system. So it means that we are going to have two different numbers assigned to these substituents. Question, which of them is therefore the correct one? The rule simply says that start the numbering for one end of the molecule that is closer or closest to a substituent. Let us look at this structure and, and identify which one is closer to um, a substituent, the numbering. If you check this compound carefully, the structures I've drawn on the, on the, on the screen for you, you'll see that the third carbon bears a methyl group, all right, for, for the two structures, the third carbon. So if you are looking at um, the structure on the left, you will notice that um, the third carbon will bear a methyl group, the substituent methyl. And if you also go to the other numbering system, starting from right to left, the third carbon also is on the and the methyl group is also on the third carbon, all right? So we have the methyl group also on the third carbon. We are looking at this one. It's interesting, isn't it? So the question is, which one should be the ultimate, the better numbering system? With this, you move on to what we call the point of difference. Since you have two carbons, you have the same substituent from, the, from either end. When you do the numbering, what you are supposed to do, the rule says that move on to the next carbon. That should be the point of difference. So it means that we did a checking from left to right. We have this substituent here, and that one too, we have that substituent there. So we cannot use these two any longer. We have to check, do we have another substituent? If there's another substituent, let's check, it's on which carbon? So for the numbering system A, on the fourth carbon, we have an amino group. But if you use the numbering system B, the amino group is on the seventh carbon. Okay, let's see, is that another substituent from the right? If we check from the numbering system B, 
the immediate substituent is on the safe carbon. So that means that since the numbering system A considers substituents having lower numbers, all right, having lower numbers, we are going to use the numbering system A because if you do the numbering from left to right, the first substituent will be on the third carbon and the next substituent will be on the fourth carbon. But if we start from the right, the first substituent is on the second carbon and the next substituent is on the sixth carbon, that is the chloral group. And since the chloral group has a higher number with this numbering system, it is therefore preferred that you use the numbering system A. Note, when say substituents are on the same carbon number from either end, use a point of difference. So that is what I explained earlier, the point of difference. And this is done by using the next carbon number. So, well, you check the right, you check the left, the same numbers. Move on to the next carbon. If there's nothing, move on to the third, the next carbon. Until you find a point of difference where one compound departs from the other, then you use that numbering system. So it means that for every organic structure, you can have multiple numbering systems. Always remember to use the numbering system that assigns lower numbers to the substituents on the parent chain. Lower numbers, that's the rule, lower numbers. So you may be able to do a numbering, but you will get the name wrong because you assign a higher number. So take your time, identify the longest and continuous carbon chain, identify all substituents and name them. Now number the carbons from either ends of the molecule, all right, starting from one end that is closer to a substituent. And since the numbering system A considers structures, all right, attached to the parent chain having smaller numbers, the numbering system A would therefore be preferred to the numbering system B. So we are now we are no more going to the numbering system B. We use only the A. If you use the number the numbering system B, you get the answer wrong. So take note, identify the longest and continuous carbon chain, identify all substituents, number the carbons in the parent chain, starting from one end of the molecule that is closer to a substituent. With some compounds, by just counting from the left, you see the first difference on maybe the second or the third carbon. So you don't have to move on to check other things because if you move on to the second carbon, you may find a substituent, but from the other end, there's nothing there. So you have to use that one. I hope you get it very well. All right, so we have done the numbering, and we are therefore going to use this wonderful numbering system. That is numbering the atoms and the carbons in the molecule, starting from the top left, coming down, going right, climbing up again, and go to the top right. Hence, numbering system A is therefore the correct numbering system, all right? Therefore, the correct numbering system. So we'll move on to rule number four, rule number four. Name the substituent indicating the carbon number on the parent chain where they are found. Remember, we have named the substituent already. We've also named the parent chain. But we are interested in locating the exact position you find those substituents. So now you are going to name the substituents and add the number of the carbon all right, on which they are found, what we call the locus, all right, on the carbon on which they are found. So we'll go back to the structure again, and it is again displayed on your screen. We have a methyl group, we have an amino group, we identify the chloral group and another methyl group. But the first methyl group is located on which carbon? So when you check the numbering system, look at the structure on your screen the entire molecule on your screen. You see that this is the first carbon, the second carbon, and that is the third carbon. The first methyl group or the substituent is attached to the third carbon. So you see that the name has been given as what? Three methyls, three methyls. And again, if you keep, if you keep counting, you notice that the, the next substituent is on the fourth carbon. So we have four amino, four amino, okay? We said NH2 will be called amino, and the amino group is on the fourth carbon. So we write four amino. The next substituent, which is the chloral group, is on the fifth carbon. All right, so we see as part of the name of the substituent, five chloro, five chloro. It's a very easy thing. You, you can answer all questions when they present them. If you follow the rules, you easily arrive at your destination. And then the last substituent, which is the one here, the methyl group, which is in red, is attached to the carbon number eight or the eighth carbon. So you should bear the name H-methyl, 
eight missiles. So these are the structures and their name, all right? In addition to the position of carbons on which they are located, what we call the locant, all right? Now listen, if you are naming the static point, indicating the number of the carbon on which is located, always write the number and separate it from a word with a dash or a hyphen, all right? With a dash or a hyphen. And when you are even condensing them, I'll be talking about this in the GC, you use commas to separate numbers. So we we'll use dash to separate numbers and words, and we we'll use a comma to separate a number and a number. So below your screen, um, below the structures there, we have this statement in red. Separate the numbers from the word with a dash or a hyphen and repeating numbers with a comma. What do you mean by repeating numbers? So for, for example, we have three missile, and then we also have eight missile. They are the same static point. So if you are condensing them, you don't have, when you are naming, you don't write eight missile, three missile, it becomes monotonous. So there's an order which says that put all of them together and separate the numbers with a comma. We'll be getting there very, very soon. I'm sure the class is getting excited. Take your time and digest it. If a chance you miss any of the things I've said earlier, you can go to YouTube at Joy Learning TV and you have access to it. Or uh, you can also go to Facebook, all right, at Joy Learning TV or any of the social media handles, IG official at Joy Learning TV. So let's move on to rule number five. So here you have identified the compound. We've also seen the parent chain. We've named the parent chain. To identify the subsequent name or the subsequent, you've done your numbering, okay? And you have named the subsequent, indicating the positions of the carbons on which they are located. The next we talk about how to put them together. Condense the names of repeating subsequent by arranging their carbon numbers in ascending order and using the following prefaces to indicate the number of repeating subsequent. So here, remember we had, we had, uh, let's look at this. We had three missile, and then we had um, eight missile. So if you want to put them together, all right, if you want to put them together, because you cannot repeat the name, you have to just put them together, it's the same missile. You arrange the numbers in front of the missile in ascending order. That means that the smaller number should come first, followed by the next one. If you have more, you just keep arranging them. So since three comes before eight, the condensed name now becomes three, eight, Die missile. I'll be, I'll be repeating the prefaces. What I mean by a die. So you are going to have three, comma, eight, then bring your dash, and then you use the prefix die missile. All right, die missile. I'll be talking about the die very, very soon. So we are condensing the name. Now this means that from what I just did earlier, you will notice that we had two missile groups. All right, one on the third carbon and the other one on the eighth carbon. Since you have two of them and you condense the name, you are condensing the numbers as well as the name. So that you don't write three, three missile, eight missile, all right? You use a, use a prefix die. Die means two, all right? It's a language we are learning. Die means two. So you are now going to have two, eight, die missile. So it means that on the third carbon and on the eighth carbon, they have Missile groups, the missile groups are two. So put one on the third carbon and put the other one on the eighth carbon. So the rule says that condense the name of repeating subsequent by arranging their carbon numbers in ascending order and using the following prefaces to indicate the number of repeating subsequent. Question, can we have more than two repeating subsequent in the molecule? The answer is yes. So as many subsequent as we have which are similar and they are repeating, Write first their names and the carbon numbers, and the next thing we'll do is that look through the numbers and arrange the numbers in ascending order, and use the prefix I'm about to show you before you bring the name of that repeating subsequent. Repeating subsequent, we use the prefix die. All right, die in chemistry means two. If you have three, we use tri. All right, we have tetra meaning four. We have penta meaning five. All right, hecta. Six. We have hepta, eight. Octa. Uh, hepta means seven. 
octa, you have eight, luna, nine, deca, all right? So you can keep going on and on and on. And I'm sure by now you're beginning to link it to your polygon. Yes, the names are similar, or the prefixes are similar. So in our numbering system shown below, so here we have gone by the numbering system A as the one that we will be using because it has lower numbers assigned to the substituents. We are now going to put the repeating unit, that is the substituents which have the same identity or they have the same name. That's what we call the repeating unit, all right? So the repeating substituents are the metal groups. From the structure we have here, we have metal groups repeating. The name therefore becomes 3H-dimeter. The di means two. So it means on the third carbon and on the eighth carbon, there are two metal groups. One is on the uh, third carbon and then one is also on the um, eighth carbon. I think it's very easy. So what do you think? Yeah. So let's move on to rule number six. Rule number six. Arrange the names of the substituents in alphabetical order. Well, uh, what does it mean? Remember, you have identified your parent K at the school. You have identified the substituent. Another thing said. You have named the substituent indicating the carbon number on which they are located, what you call the locus. Simple. We also went through and noticed that some of the substituents are repeating. We've been able to condense the name. So we had two, no, we had three H dimethyl or three, four, five trichloro. So you just put them together. Now, when you finish, the next rule says that arrange the names of these substituents, all right, in alphabetical order before the name of the parent K. There's always a caution. If you have repeating units, we don't use the letter of the prefix, all right? The repeating prefix, we don't use that one. For example, in our earlier example, we saw 3H dimethyl, all right? So the di, the D will not be used when it comes to the alphabetical order. We are going to use the word or the name methyl, M, as the, element, uh, the, the letter starting the name of that substituent. So arrange the names of the substituents in alphabetical order. This is done by using the first letters of the names of the substituent. Then the question comes in. Note, the first letters of the prefaces of repeating substituents are not used. So here you have the first letters, di, thi, all right, tetra, penta, hexa, hexa. We don't use those, those letters, the first letter. Rather, you use the actual letter for the correct spelling of that substituent. All right, so in our example above, the names of the substituents, all right, uh, so here we have condensed them. Let's see how it goes. So we have four amino. You notice that we are using A, all right, which is the first letter of the word amino. Four amino. Then we had five chloro, all right, five chloro and eight dimethyl. Indicating how many metal groups that have been condensed. All right, so we have M as the metal, and that is what we are going to use. And since in alphabetical order, A comes before C, and C comes before M, all right, in this ascending or in that order of alphabetical order, the amino should come first, followed by the chloro, followed by the methyl, right? So we are going to write the name of the compound by first arranging the names of the substituents, and when you are done, add the name of the parent key. It's very simple, isn't it? Yeah. So the condensed and arranged names of the substituents now becomes four amino, five chloro, metals. And the letters, all right, starting the, the spelling of the name of the substituent. So when you condense the names of the substituent, this is what you will get. 4 amino, 5 chloro, 3 H dimethyl. This is just the name of the substituent. It's not the name of the compound. We have been able to name all the substituents in that nice order. All right. And then as we say that, just add the name of the parent key. And we are there, the name of the compound. Isn't it very easy? Yeah. So place the array names of the substituents in front of the parent key. Place the array names of the substituents in front of the parent key without spacing to form the name of the compound. So that means that if you are arranging the names of these substituents before the name of the parent, don't say that you have um, five chloro, then you leave a big space, all right? They'll close the gap and they'll mark easily for that. But it's a rule. We don't 
you don't break the rule. These are lay down rules you use in naming compounds. But if you if you break it, it forms another thing. All right. So please learn to follow these simple rules. So the name of the substituent, if you put all the substituents together, you have four amino, five chloro, three H dimethyl. And we said the name of the parent chain is the same. So the name of the arcane molecule now becomes name of parent chain, uh, name of substituent followed by name of parent chain. So you have the name of the substituent. Name of substituent, then you have the name of the parent chain, all right? Parent chain. It must be together. They must be together, all right? They must be together. So if you follow that, then you will see that the name of the compound that we use as our example now becomes 4 amino, 5 chloro, 3 H dimethyl cetane. 4 amino, 5 chloro, 3 H dimethyl cetane. Very easy, isn't it? Our portion as usual. Uh, chemistry is full of rules, and it, I want you to follow the rules. It's so easy. All right, it's so easy. So note. The first letter of the name must be a capital letter. So you see, it's a English will tell you the noun. All right, the noun. So since you are naming the compound, the first letter, all right, must be a capital letter. All other letters must be in small font size or small letters. All right. Uh -huh. So all other letters must be small letters. There should be no spacing between the names of the substituent and the parent chain, so that you don't write um, uh, what's the name um, three. Okay, so we had four amino, five chloro, three a dimethyl. You don't write the four, uh, the four amino, they leave space. They write five chloro, they leave space. It is wrong. Put all of them together. And you see that when you put all of them, the name becomes very long. And when they give them long, they don't panic at all. It's very easy to decode it as well. All right, it's very easy also to decode it. Uh, so before we move on to examples, I want to show you. Okay, so now when you are given this compound, that is the name you have generated, isn't it? Question, can we also write the name of the compound? Can we draw the structure of the compound from the name? The answer is yes. How do we do it? Very simple. Remember, we broke them down when we were doing it. So we are going to follow the same rules. We started first with the parent chain. And the parent chain, we said we had how many? 10 carbon. So we just write 10 carbon. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have made it fifteen. It's allowed, all right, because this compound they just bend around their bond. They don't break. So they don't break. So just count the numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the parent chain here will have ten carbons. And since it's a 10 carbon compound, we'll call it the cane. So the decane part is what I've underlined. I hope you get it. Very well. Now, from the decane, we move on to the substituent. And we have already numbered the carbon. So what we'll do next is to just pick the compound and then pick the substituent on them. This is very simple. We know that the substituent comes in the form of amino. And amino is NH. So we just go to the structure, look for the fourth carbon, and put NH2 there. So we have NH2. So amino is on the fourth carbon. Then come to the name again. Two, three, four, five. Okay, you can decide to put at the top or the down. No, nobody will catch it. The same thing. All right, so here we can decide to put it at the top, or you can even decide to put it down there. Nobody will catch it. So it is. Um, so you have your chloro on the fifth carbon. Then you move on to the three and the eight. So it means that on the third carbon, put a methyl group there. So we come here and we can decide to put a methyl group. We can put it at the top or at the down. I'm only looking at congestion. That's why I place it down there. But I can also put it at the top. It will be much correct. All right. And then on the eighth carbon, put another methyl group there. Now that we have been able to fix these methyl groups and amino group and the uh, the chloro group. The rest is to make sure that every carbon is surrounded by how many 
four bonds to be saturated because arcanes are saturated compounds and every carbon there must have a minimum. So we have a CH3, all right? Remember this is a bond, that's a bond. So put two here, then this is a, a, this is a bond, all right? That is a bond. So we are going to put um, eight here, all right? So we have one, two, three, then the next one here becomes the bond. Then you are just applying the H's just to complete the molecule, all right? So you have T, here you have an H, here you have H2, and voila, you have drawn the structure again. So you can get the name from the structure, you can get the structure on this one. Okay, I hope it's very clear. In our next slide, I'll be giving you examples, and then we are going to name all of them. We name all of them. You see that it's very, very easy. Very, very, very easy. So let's look at example one. Name the following compound. Name the following compound. We have two examples. We name the compound, and then the next example, we will now draw the structures on the compound. So you see this molecule, this beautifully crafted molecule. We'll be naming all of them. All right, they are nice. They are good for your head. All right, they are good for you. So we have A, B. All right, there's a C, D, and A. Okay, so we'll, we'll break them down as we move on. We'll be naming all these. All right, we'll name all these. So we have a G and an H. Okay, so let's name them. You see that on this page, we, are, we just have the molecule. There are no writings because we are going to do it together. So take your uh, sheet of paper, get a pen, and let's do it together. For this molecule, we don't have the name, so we are going to generate the name. And we can identify the longest and continuous carbon chain by combing through the carbons in the chain. So here, we can have the longest and continuous carbon chain either as this one, all right, or we can have it also as this. Any of them will still give us the longest and continuous carbon chain. But remember, we can also have this, all right, as a pairing. So by looking at this compound, we can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have identified a C8 carbon. And we can also have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Um, we are looking at this. So we have um, one. Let me use a red pointer so you can see. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in this compound, we have so many carbons. We have a C7, and then we have a C8. But we know that the rule says you should count the numbers of the carbons and choose the one that contains the highest number of carbon and is also continuous and also has the rest called sharp chain. So in this molecule, our parent chain all right, will be a C8 compound, and the parent chain, therefore, um, will bear the name ox. And since an arcane, we add an H, A, and E to it, it becomes octane, right? So the parent chain now becomes octane. And we said that any other thing apart from the subsequent will be called, uh, apart from the parent chain, will be called a subsequent. So I want us to locate the subsequent, that is why I'm cleaning portions of it. So that means that this is going to be a subsequent. Those portions I'm putting in the circle are all subsequent. All right, so we have these as our subsequent. And we have to name the subsequent. We said that a CH3 will be called a methyl, right? So we have a methyl. Okay, so we have a methyl. And then we have a chloro, so we have chloro. But we have another chloro, if you go through it, and I'm talking about this one, so we have this and that. We have a chloro, another chloro, and then the last one, a methyl, all right? So we have a methyl. So these are the, so we have the methyl group. Okay, we have the methyl group. Um, we have the methyl group. All right, so we have the methyl group. And then what to do next is to name the parent chain and then also number the carbons in the parent chain starting from one end of the molecule 
that is closer to a subsequent. So in numbering the carbons in the parent chain, we can start the numbering from left to right or from right to left. So let's do the numbering and see. Um, so with this numbering, we are going to do this very simple exercise here. So let's start. So this will be our first carbon, second carbon, third, fourth, fifth. We have the sixth, seventh, and then the eighth. That gives us obtained. But remember, we can also do the numbering from right also to the left. If we do the numbering from right to left, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. However, when you check the numbering from the right, that is the top down, the first subsequent is a metal group and is attached to the third carbon. So we have one, two, three. But if you check the numbering from the left to the right, the first subsequent is another metal group, but it is attached to the second carbon. Since two is less than three, it means the right numbering here should be from the left or right to the right. And hence, we are going to rename the subsequent indicating the carbons on which they are located. And if we should do so, we are going to have um, two methyl. We have a two methyl. That is, there's a methyl group on the second carbon. Then you have three chloro. There's a chloro group on the third carbon. Then on the fifth carbon, one, two, three, four. On the fourth carbon, on the fourth carbon here, we ha we also have another methyl group. So we are going to have um, another chloro group. We have four chloro. And then if you move on to the fifth carbon, all right, so you have four, five, six. So that gives you six methyl. So now that we have named the metal groups, we've also named the parent chain. Then we say that put the names together. All right, so it means that we'll go through and see if we don't have any repeating units, we just arrange them in alphabetical order. But if we have repeating units, we'll condense the repeating units and rearrange the names of the subsequent. Now going through it, you'll notice that there's a meter here, there's another meter there, so we need to condense the name. And in condensing the name, the name becomes two, six, dimethyl, di meaning two methyl. And then what we do next is to arrange the names of the subsequent in alphabetical order. We say we are not going to use the di because it only tells us how many methyl groups we have there. But I'll be using the M, we'll be using the C, all right, and that'll be the name. If we check again, on the third and also on the fourth carbon, we have a chloro. So the names will now become three, four, Dichloro, all right? So these are the names we are going to use, this and that. And when you put them together, since C comes before M, you will now have the arrangement as three, four, remember to put your dash here, all right? Three, four, dash, then you have your dichloro. Then you follow it with the two, six dimethyl. I only said that if you are naming them, always start with a capital letter. The rest will all be small letters. So that will be the names of all the subsequent. But we have to put the names of the subsequent before the name of the parent chain. So if you put them together, the name of this molecule shown on your screen as question A now becomes three, four, dichloro, Two six dimethyl. All right, octane. Octane. I think it's very easy. All right. All right. So we have three four dichloro, two six dimethyl octane, three four dichloro, two six dimethyl octane. Let's look at the next example. So in our next example. I'll give you some few seconds, right? For example, okay, let me give you like 10 seconds, all right, to get a name, and then I'll also come in to do it together. But like I said, call a friend to call a friend, join us to learn together, all right? Organic chemistry is very exciting, 
And if you miss any portion of this wonderful concept, you can go on YouTube at Joy Learning TV and you watch it. All right, so we'll be back in a jiffy and we shall continue the concept. Just believe in yourself and even if you don't, pretend you do and at some point you will. Examination malpractice is a no-no. My name is Tina and I am your examination coach. Here are some practices you must avoid when taking an exam. Let's talk about the don'ts. 1. Don't get stuck on a question. If you get a particularly hard question, don't sit there panicking about it. The best thing you can do is to have a quick think about it, mark it with a highlighter, and move on to another question. Two, do not arrive late in the examination hall. Abiding by the time during exams is extremely important. Reach the venue at least 20 minutes prior to the time. Three, avoid studying late at night. Studying for hours at night can affect your sleep cycle negatively. According to studies, Studying in the daytime is more beneficial and effective than late night studies. 4. Engage in group studies. Friends can be beneficial for you during your preparation. You can explain topics in which you are good to your friends and your friends can do the same for you. Synergic studies can boost preparation and confidence to another level. 5. Students are not to change their seats with others. One must always make sure not to sit at a place which does not correspond to their index number or where he or she has been assigned to sit. 6. Do not carry mobile phone, smartwatch or unauthorized electronic device to the exam room. 7. Never start writing the answers until the invigilator tells you to do so. 8. Do not write the examination for another person, neither should you allow someone to write your exams for you. 9. Do not take your answer booklet or question paper outside the examination hall during the examination. Alright, there you have it. Believe in yourself, prepare well and you will come out with flying colors. My name is Tina and I am your number one examination coach. Keep watching Joy Learning and follow us on all social media platforms. Till I come your way again, shine on. Joy learning, keep learning. Welcome back. If you are joining us, we are still having our live show on the integrated science organic chemistry for SHS and you are welcome if you are now joining us and you missed a portion of this uh, wonderful class you can go online YouTube all right so see there are even other subjects there and other topics at join learning TV and access all the videos all right call a friend to call a friend and let's continue so before we went for the break we we're looking at nomenclature of arcane and we said they are laid down rules all right they're given by IUPAT that is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. The rules are very simple. First, you are given the organic compound, identify the longest and Then any other thing apart from the parent chain will be called the substituent. We said the substituent is a non-hydrogen atom or groups of atoms attached to a parent chain that determines the chemical and physical property of that organic compound or molecule. We gave ourselves some examples. So we were working with them. We said so after Identifying the substituent, number the carbon starting from one end of the molecule that is closer to a substituent. And we said we can identify so many things, but do the proper numbering 
so that we assign the simple or the least numbers to the substituent. After which, you name the substituent, indicating the carbon number on which or the carbon on which they are located. Arrange the names of the substituents in alphabetical order. Where you have substituents repeating, arrange their names, all right, their numbers in ascending order and use the appropriate spaces. So here, looking at di, tri, etc. That is what we were doing before we went for the bridge. Then after, arri after writing the names of the substituents in that logical ascending order, place it before the name of the parent chain without spacing. And we said the first letter must also be a capital letter. So now, showing on your screen is that compound we, uh, we displayed. So let's look at the name. For this compound, we have a straight chain carbon, all right? We have a CA3, CA2, and CA2. Don't panic at all. First, identify which one is longer. Interestingly, if you look at this molecule, you have the same carbon chain. Counting from the left, you can have this as one of the chains, isn't it? And this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. You have a C6 carbon chain. And if you count also from the top to the down or to the right, you get a C6. If you count from the top to the left, you only have C3. And since we are interested in the highest number of carbons, the C6 all right, we we'll, we'll pretend over the, the three carbon compound. So here we are going to use a C6 carbon chain. Now that we have identified the longest and continuous carbon chain as a C6 carbon chain, we said we'll have to name it. So the parent chain, all right, so the parent chain now becomes a, six, six, uh, a C6 carbon. And we know that a C6 carbon arcane chain, chain will be called hexane, hex meaning six. All right, so you have hexane. Now we are down with the parent chain. What we do is to identify the substituent. Any other thing that is not part of the parent chain is what we call the substituent. And interestingly, we have four substituents in this molecule. The first one is a methyl. So we have a methyl. And remember, it is a CH3, all right? Then the second one, is a chloro. So in fact, we have two chloros. If you check, we have a chloro. There's another chloro again. All right, another chloro. And then there is an amino. Amino, all right. That is the NH2. So these are the substituents. Now the next rule says that name the substituents indicating the carbon numbers on which they are found. We know that the metal group here, if we are doing the numbering, we can have one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five, six. So here we can have two numbers, and we say that when numbering, we have to use numbers assigned to the first or the, the immediate substituent with the least number. That's what we are supposed to do. Interestingly, if we check from the left hand side, we have a metal group as the first substituent, and if you count also from the right. The, we have an amino group as a first substituent. Methyl and amino, A comes before M. So the numbering, therefore, should start from right to left. In our first example, we started from left to right. So with this numbering, it means that we have to go by the one down here. And as we are using from right to left, five meters, I'm talking about. And on the chloro, on the uh, fourth carbon, if you come from the left, we have one, two, three, four. On the fourth carbon, we have a chloro. So we have four chloro. Again, we have another chloro on the same fourth carbon. So we have four chloro again. All right. And the last one, which is the amino, two amino. Now that we have written the names of these substituents indicating their locants or the carbon numbers on which they are attached to, we will have to now put the names of the substituent together. But before we do so, we have to go through and see, do we have repeating substituents, that the substituents with the same name? And the answer is yes, because we have two substituents, a chloro and a chloro. So we cannot write four chloro, four chloro, monotonous. We have to put them together. So the name now becomes four, four, they are two. So we are going to use the word die. So we have four, four, dichloro. I think it's very easy, isn't it? So you have 4,4-dichloro. 
And now, when we, now that we are done, we go through again. If we have any other repeating substance, then put them together. Since we have exhausted the repeating substance, we now arrange the names of the substituents in alphabetical order. We said the prefix in identify how many of them there are in the repeating will not be used. So what are the letters we are using? For the metal groups, we are using M. For the chloro, we are using the C. And for the amino, we are using A. Well, in terms of the letters, we know that A comes all right, <laughs> before the rest. So that means that we will have two amino, and we said separate numbers from words with a hyphen, numbers from numbers with a, with a comma. All right, so we have two amino, and we know that from A we should go to C in terms of the letters. Dichloro, all right. Then after the four for dichloro, what is next? We go to our M. The M is on the fifth carbon, so we write five methyl. Okay, so now that we know the parent chain at hexane, and we now know the condensed name of all the substituents put together, what we are just going to do is write the name of the, the standard name of the substituent and follow it up with the name of the parent chain without spacing. So we're now going to have the name as two amino. Four four dichloro, but there is a methyl group on the fifth one. You have five methyl. Then you add the name of the parent chain. It becomes hexane. So the name of the compound displayed on your screen. Therefore, two amino, four four dichloro. 5 methyl hexane. Very simple. Sometimes they think that, oh, chem chemists are very complex people. They bring a very long name. When they bring a long name, relax. Don't panic at all. Break it from the, the parent chain to substituent. And you see that was very simple. It's very, very simple. I hope you got the same name. All right, but if you made a mistake, go back to the YouTube channel again, Soil Learning TV, and you'll be fixed. All right. And leave your comments there. Let's look at the Next question, question C. Question C. I'll give you some two seconds to look at it again. And let's try the name. With this compound, it's a bit tricky. So you need to take your time, open your eyes, and you name it. There are, you can have two chains, right? You can have this one. And then you can have from the left to the right, but you climb up, all right? And I hope you have seen this. So we can have two chains. If you move from the left to the right, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is a C7 compound. If you move from the left to the right and you ascend it, you could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is a C8 compound. The rule is you identify the longest and continuous carbon chain. So it means that the C8, all right, will be preferred to the C7. And since it's a C8 compound, a C8 compound we said will be called oct, right? So you have octane, octane, very simple, octane. Now that we have identified the longest and continuous carbon chain in this, half from the parent chain will be considered as a substitute. So I'm going to clean this portion, all right? And then we redraw it again so that we have only the substituent outside. Okay, so this is our um, our parent chain. Now, any other thing apart from this parent chain will be called a substituent. So we have those ones in my circles here as the substituent. Remember, the parent chain carries eight carbons, so we call it octane. So what name, therefore, should we give to this substituent? The F we know will be called a fluoro. All right. CL will be called a chloro. Um, we have also a BR. BR will be bromo. Is that to get the names of these compounds, if you were, you've been familiar with your periodic table. Some of you decided that you don't learn the periodic table at all. First 20, you are still hanging on to the first 20. Please, you beg me. Uh, I'll grade a little. Go to first 50 or first 100. All right, it's good for your health, and your life will not be the same. Learn everything. So here we have the BR. Then you have another group here, which is a CA3, also in a circle. And we said it will be called a methyl. Chloro, chloro, bromo, and a methyl. What do we
we do next, we number the carbon starting from one end of the molecule that is closer to the first substituent. If we start the numbering from the left, we will see that the first substituent will be on the second carbon. If we start the numbering from the top down, the first substituent will be on the third carbon. So let's do the numbering together. We see, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so these are eight one. And if we start from right, top down, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, but in assigning the proper numbering system, you choose which one will have the substituent assigned the least number. Right, so you have the least substituent, the least number assigned to the, the first substituent. And then if you check, the first substituent counting from the left is on the second carbon. But the first substituent counting from the right is on the third carbon. So it is preferred that you start the numbering from the left because the left one will give you the least number, assign the number two to the first substituent. So we are going to have the names as We have a methyl. So we have now you go through to see if you are repeating unit. Unfortunately, this one there are no repeating units. So we are not going to merge them. Then what you do next is arrange the substituent in alphabetical order. All right, before the name of the French is. So in arranging them, B should come first. Or oh, yes, so B will come first. You have three bromo. Then from B, you go to C. So you have five chloro. Then from the five chloro, you should go to F, right? From B, you should go to C. From C, you go to F. So we have two chloro. And then you end it with what? Your six methyl. Your six methyl. So this will be the, the total name or the names, all right, that will put together to form that of the substituent. So the entire substituent will be named as 3 bromo 5 fluoro 2 fluoro 6 meter. It sounds long, but it's very easy. We know how we got them. And then we add the parent chain to it without, it, without spacing. So the name of the compound now becomes, so name of compound it now becomes 3 bromo 5 chloro Two fluoro. So here you small letters, don't forget to fluoro. Six methyl. Then you add the name of same. The name only looks long, but it's very easy. If you want to write the, the structure from the name, you go to the parent chain. How many carbons? Eight. You write carbon, eight carbon. Then you put numbers on the carbons. On the third carbon, put bromo. On the fifth carbon, put fluoro. You on, the on the second carbon, put fluoro the fifth carbon, and see that it's very interesting. Let's try it and see. So we have octane, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are the, these are the carbons in the parent chain. They are eight in all. Let's number, the, you can start the numbering from left or right, any of them. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? So from the name, it means that on the third carbon, put a bromo, which is a Br. On the fifth carbon, put a chloro, which is a Cl. On the second carbon here, put a fluoro, which is an F. On the sixth carbon, put a methyl, all right, um, which is a CH3. Then the rest, just hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So here you have your hydrogen, terminal. So it should be CH3. Then you have your CH. Then you have a CH. You have CH2. You have a CH. You have a CH, CH2, CH3. And if you check, it's the same molecule. If you check, it is the same molecule, all right? Very easy. What do you think? Yeah, it is. Okay. Question D. Question number D. Well, this compound is also an interesting one, and I hope you to figure it out. Now, if you look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, carbons, all right, in the chain. 
So in terms of the carbon number, we have C7. And this is going to be heptane, right? All right, so we have heptane. And then it so means that this will be the parent. Any other thing we are going to consider to be a suffix. So we have heptane. If you do the numbering, starting from the right, you will notice that there's an I on the second carbon, which is iodo. But if you do the numbering from the left, you have the first substituent also on the second carbon called chloro. All right. But since F comes before I, it means you have to choose the one on the left. So let's do the two numbering system. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here you can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So like I said, if you do the numbering from the left, you see that the F is on the second carbon. If you do the numbering from the right, the I is on the second carbon. But F in alphabetical order comes before I. So you have to choose the one from the left. Okay, choose the one from the left. So here, the names of the substituent now become two fluoro. So you have two fluoro. And then you now also have, uh, so here you are looking at the fluoro. That is the F. And then um, the bromo is the third carbon. So you have three bromo. All right, that is a BR. Then the next subsequent carbon, so we have four. And the CL. And then you also have two iodo. Two iodo. All right, two iodo. The parent chain is heptane, so if you arrange the names of these substituents in alphabetical order, then let's put the name of the parent chain as I. We have the name of the compound. So here we are going to write three bromo. So we have three bromo. Then you separate it from the next one. Um, it should be C. So we have four chloro. Then the next one should naturally be an F. So from C, you should go to F, isn't it? So rather you have two fluoro. And then the last letter is the iodo. And when you add the name of the parent chain to the name of the names of these substitutes put together, it becomes three bromo, four chloro, two fluoro. Um, the iodo was on the sixth carbon, so six, you have six iodo. And then you add the name heptane, a C7 carbon, so you call it heptane. I think it's very easy, all right? Heptane, very, very easy. Well, so let's see if we have another question. Well, there's an E. The questions are planned. Myself, I'm in a hurry to finish, and then we can start our two then. You know, it's very exciting, but it takes a lot of time. So with this, We'll try and figure out the parent chain. If you check the parent chain here, um, you have this. All right. So this will be the parent chain. And when we start the numbering, we should start the numbering from the left because the first substituent will be on the second card. That is the floral. All right. So if you start naming them, you're going to get two. Make sure that you also follow. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so it's a CH compound. All right, and the CH compound is an ox. All right, so we call it octane. And then we have two fluoro. Then, it all right, this is a two carbon substituent, three ethyl. All right. Then when it's attached to the sixth carbon, so we have six methyl. We arrange them again. There's no repeating or recurring substituents. We just arrange them in that alphabetical order. And in terms of, isn't it? So you have four chloro. Then from the chloro you go to three ethyl. Then from E you go to S, you have two fluoro. 
then from the floral, you go to six methyl, forming the entire name of the subsequent. Now that you are done with the entire name of the subsequent, you add it to the name of the parent chain, and now becomes four chloral, three ethyl, two fluoro, six methyl, octane. So there are two more questions. I'll jump over them. You see that when you go online, you can go online and check. You can leave your comments. Uh, name this compound. Leave it under the comment section. I'll also react to it at Joy Learning TV. All right, Joy Learning TV. So we move on to our next example. These ones are the easiest. They give the names of the compounds and pa 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 pa. You just write the names of these uh, compounds. So draw the structure of the following compounds. 2,2-dimethylbutane, two 2-iodo-2-chlorobutane, two same. Let us look at the solution. So I said with a compound like this, don't panic, break it down one by one. So the butane means you have four carbons in the chain. All right, so you, you draw your four carbons. One, two, three, four. Very well. And then you come to the substituent. We have two metal groups, but they are on the second carbon. So number the carbons. One, two, three, four. I am used to numbering num uh, carbons from left to right, but based on the rules, I'm using the numbering. Because I'm just having carbon, that's why I started from the left to the right. But if you also use from right to left, the answer will still be the same. Okay? All right. So here, um, from the name, it means that on the second carbon, put a metal group. Metal groups are simply CH3, all right? So you put a CH3 here, and the rule says that on that same carbon, that is 2,2, two, two, you have a, a two metal group, so CH3, you have a CH3, and then the name of the compound comes out, the structure of the compound comes out. So just add the hydrogen to complete it. You have a CH2 and CH3. So 2,2 two, two, dimethyl butane, very easy, okay. But let's move on to the next question. 2 iodo 2 chlorobutane, another butane compound. So we don't panic at all. Start with the butane. You can have 1, 2, 3, 4. This time I want to start the numbering from right to left. All these I've been doing the left to right. Let's start from right to left. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm not doing it for any reason. I'm just doing it because the numbering can be done from either left to right or from right to left. So when we do the numbering, we've done 1, 2, 3, 4. And then the name says suggests that on the second carbon, put an iodo group. All right. So sh the name should have been two chloro, two iodo, rather, because C comes before the iodo. So we have an iodo group here. And then you also have a chloro group there. And then let's, let's apply the hydrogen. So you have CA3, CA2, and then you have your CH3. It's very, very easy. Very, very easy. You get it. Very, very easy. If you miss it, you can go to YouTube, all right, and enjoy the rest of the show there. Well, so we have one bromo three chloro two methyl butane. Again, butane. This is plenty butane. Let's start and see. So we have a carbon, a carbon, a carbon, and another carbon. All right. So here we are going to put. We are going to number the carbons. One, two, three. So I should have started from right to left. Okay. So the next one, I'll start from right to left. So um, on the first carbon, we have to put a bromo group. So we can decide to put it BR here, or we can even put it on top or down. Nobody starts with the same, the same molecule. On the third carbon, you put your chloro, which is a Cl. And on the second carbon, you put your methyl group, which is a CH3. All right. And the rest, hydrogen. So you have CH2. You have a CH, a CH. You have a CH3. Very, very easy. Isn't it? Very, very, very easy. All right. Number four. Four chloro five methyl hexane. So again, we start with the parent chain. Six carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six. We are done. Then you count the numbers. So let's add the numbers. One, okay, this I want to start from here. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Okay. 
So the name suggests that on the third time on put a chloro. So you have a chloro group. Put a Cl there. You can decide to put it down. All right, it's allowed. And on the fifth carbon, put a metal group. You have a CH3. Hydrogen. Supply the carbons with hydrogen. Just to make sure that the carbons are saturated. That is, they are surrounded by the maximum of four single covalent bonds. So you have CH3, CH2, CH. You have a CH2, all right? And here you have a CH, you have a CH3. If you write it in a condensed form, you have CH3, CH, you can decide to put your CH3 here. Then you have your CH2, there's a T here. Then you have a CH, there's a chloral group here. Then you have a CH2, CH3. Very, very easy, all right, very, very easy. I want to see you answering more questions. Go attack all the past questions. Go into other textbooks, name all of them. And where you are not sure, you, you can put it there. We won't name it together, all right, at the YouTube. So that brings us to nomenclature. <laughs> nomenclature of our case, just our case. See, we went through a lot of it, but it's very easy. We move on to uses of our case. So now we know how to name our case, whether from molecule to uh, structure to name or name to structure, we can do it. Let us look at uses of our case. Our case has several uses, all right? And the uh, use of our case depends on the number of carbons present in the molecule. So since we can have a one carbon compound, a two carbon compound, a three carbon, four carbon, they all have their uses, all right? Because of their energy content, what we can use them for varies from one to the other and the kind of reaction and products we get from them. So the lower our case, such as methane, remember methane, butane, propane, butane are used as domestic fuels. Um, so most of the, uh, the gas that we use at home, the domestic gas is the propane butane gas mixture, all right? But we have lower our case like the methane, which is a natural gas. So it's associated with decomposition. But we use all of them as domestic fuels. Now other, others such as petrol, I'm sure it rings a bell, fuel for cars, internal combustion engine, all right? So we have petrol cars, uh, petrol engines, all right? Um, it's used as fuels for internal combustion engines. Kerosene is used as domestic or aviation fuel. Well, these days we've not been using kerosene a lot at home, but growing up and people around our ages, you know, um, uh, many years ago, we used to have um, what we call stove, <laughs> kerosene stove. Then they have some, they put some petrol, they pour wig, they soak, you, you suspend the wig in the kerosene, then you light. Sometimes it's very smoky, but somehow uh, we were cooking. Okay, and we don't know how to handle it when the kerosene enters your food and it spoils the taste of the entire food, but you must eat it as well. So we, 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 we went through a lot, but people, you are happy, you are, you are lucky, mm -hmm. you are enjoying, and you should work hard to make the next generation uh, happier and also things easier for them. So others such as petrol is used as fuels for internal combustion engines. Kerosene is used as domestic or aviation fuel. We also have diesel, all right? Diesel is another fuel for diesel engines, and they are used in ships as well, all right? Heavy-duty machines. So the pipa trucks you see, most of the big buses you see, they are all working. The engines are working based on the diesel fuel or the diesel we give them. We have ships and then uh, engine, other engines. So they can also be cracked. If you have higher molecular weight are changed, you can crack them. Cracking, that is an interesting word. Cracking. It means you can take the molecule and break it down to give you smaller molecular weight arcanes in addition to arcanes and sometimes hydrogen. Cracking is the breakdown of large molecular weight arcanes into lower molecular weight arcanes, arcanes and sometimes hydrogen with the use of high temperatures, all right, or a catalyst or even steam. So we have three times the science students you should go and read it's part of the syllabus, steam cracking, thermal cracking and catalytic cracking. Well, we also have petroleum lubricants, all right, which are used um, in parts of machines to reduce friction, hence lowering energy loss. So if you have, sometimes you watch cars or any other machine that, that has joints, where you have two points joining, they always lubricate the fluid because since one is moving over the other, you have friction, there will be heavier wear and tear. In order to reduce that, uh, what we call energy loss, we lubricate and the lubricant prevents friction. Friction. 
Um, we also have Vaseline, which we use as pomade, put in our hair, apply it on the skin, right? And um, uh, it has other uses. You can also crack it to form lower molecular weight as things or fuels. We have paraffin wax, and people call them candles. We have the liquid paraffin. Mm -hmm. Paraffin actually refers to our things. So the wax, the solid, is used as the candle, all right? But we also have the liquid one uh, we use in the lab. Now, coal tar. Well, I think it rings a bell. You ever walk on the road? You see this black, it's a black, it's like a black um, liquid they laid on the street before putting stones on it. That is if you are, you are, you are walking around what we call the capital, all <laughs> right then. But if you use the asphalt, so they are different. So the coal tar, the bitumen and the asphalt are used in constructing roads. So they mix them with the stones and sand and then they lay them over roads and they are, they are compacted, they make the road very durable and it, it gives you that free ride with little to no bumps at all. Right, so that when you get to, uh, but this is, people are just demonstrating left, right, center. Well, the higher molecular weight are canes, for example, Vaseline, paraffin, and other heavy petroleum fractions can be further cracked through thermal, steam, or catalytic cracking to form lower molecular weight arcane. So what it means is that if you have a bigger arcane molecule, like the Vaseline, all right, like the, like the, um, the bitumen, like the kota, all right, like the asphalt, you can also crack them. Okay, you can crack them through either thermal, steam, or catalytic cracking. Um, thermal oil refinery used to do that. I don't know whether they are still doing it. Well, so we move on to say that they, however, undergo, uh, we are looking at the reactions of our canes. Our canes are chemically inert. It means they don't easily react. That's why we use, we use them in storing very reactive um, elements or metals in the lab. Right. So the science student, if you remember, there is under uh, periodic chemistry, they tell you that the group one metals are very, very reactive. And for that reason, they are kept in paraffin oil. It's, it's one of the reasons. They are inert. They, they hardly react with oxygen. So this means they highly react with other substances to form products. They, however, undergo substitution reactions. You, the science students, are supposed to learn them free radical substitution reactions. And their substitution reaction forms a mixture of products. So if you are substituting them, you, are, you react them with a substance and the hydrogens are replaced, you will not have a uniform compound. You have a mixture of compounds and you need to separate them. Separating those compounds are very expensive, so it is not worth it uh, using that technique to produce other compounds from arcane. Mm -hmm. However, they burn freely in excess oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. That is why they are exploited when it comes to fuels. So the petrol, the kerosene, the diesel, all right, they use them as fuels. And you can also crack them. All too soon, this brings us to the end of our canes. Now we move on to our canes. All right, it's becoming more exciting. Call a friend to call a friend. We are getting there. We are getting there. Well, Well, so um, our kids, we'll be starting with our kids, but our time is almost done. And you know, we cannot end our class without our problem of the day. I'll go through the slides, and um, you can have access to it online. Okay, so go to um, Joy Learning TV at YouTube. So go to YouTube and do that, and you will have them. So very soon, we shall display the problem of the day. But before we do the problem of the day, I want to quickly go through these slides with you. You can take your time and read them. Pause the video and watch. All right. Read them. Make your comments. And if you want, you can also go down there, add a comment section. Invite other friends to also watch. We want everybody to do well in integrated science. All right. Um, Joy Learning TV is really doing well for you. So you should learn hard. All right. You should learn hard and make sure you succeed and make us all proud. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are slow, we are going through the slides and very soon arrive at our problem of the day. The slides are quite many, but uh, we'll get there. All right, we'll get there. So this brings us to the end of our keys. And from this, you have also been given names of compounds name, and then draw the structure out of the object. So take your time. Read through, leave your comments, test for our kids. So that brings us to the end of part one. And then we have questions and answers. So take your time and go through all the questions, all the answers. And then you can also share your comments with us. Um, 
at Joy Learning TV on YouTube. All right, on YouTube. Very, very easy. Very soon, our SHS3 students, whom we are painstakingly going through this, to help you study um, right to the integrated science. WASI has officially started. I want to use the opportunity to encourage all of you to burn the midnight candle and come out successful. We want to see you at the tertiary level and don't forget to make us proud. It's very, very important for us. Okay, so work hard, come out. Let's see what uh, life will present to you. Okay, so we are almost there. We'll look at our problem of the day and then um, we bring our lesson to a close. All right. The slides are quite many. Take your time, read through them. Make sure you solve questions that have not been coming for some time now. All right. So showing on your screen is the problem of the day. Interestingly, it is a compound that you have to name. So the problem of the day reads, name the organic compound below. Name the organic compound below. It's showing on your screen. And if you get a name, you can reach out. You can reach out to us on our numbers, 0302. 211705 or 0302 211706. So the questions are displayed there. Answer is phone in and we'll be happy to hear from you. So the numbers are showing on your screen 0302 211705 or 0302. 211706. The first person to answer this, I'll clap for you. I'll clap for you. I'll clap for you. I'll specially clap for you. Because I know you have done well. So when you have the answer, you call us, you tell us your name and where you are calling from. And now the next one is to give us the name of the compound. And we'll check against the name that we have. If you have it correct, then we'll give you a shout out move on. So with this compound, we have a CH3, CH2, CH3, you have so many CH3, CL, you have NH2, you have a CA2, CA3. Name the compound. Let's go. Take your time. Identify the longest and continuous carbon chain as a pairing chain. And when you are done, locate those structures attached to the parent chain, which are not part of the chain, call them static ring. Number the carbon starting from one end of the molecule, all right, um, such that you assign the lowest numbers to the static ring. Now, name the static ring, indicate the numbers of the carbons on which they are found. Arrange the static ring. If you have repeating static ring, condense the name, all right? So you put them together. The one you finish, arrange the static range in alphabetical order before the name of the parent chain. So we are still with this molecule is very simple. Very, very simple. Well, nobody is calling. Does it mean that the question is quite tough for you? I don't think it is. Or if you are sleeping, stop sleeping. All right. If you are sleeping, stop sleeping. Answer the question. Okay. If you don't answer the question, this question will appear in your dreams. It will appear. You you answer it. Anyway, so I'll be answering it in a jiffy if I don't get any call from anybody, and then we bring our class to a wonderful end. Well, since nobody is <laughs> answering the question, I'll answer the question myself. All right, I'll answer it. I'll answer it myself. But if you are if you're able to make it through, you can phone in and then we'll, 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 match, we'll match the answer you have against what we also have here. 
All right, so to name this compound, the process is very simple. We identify the longest and continuous carbon chain. So we are going to identify the longest and continuous. Okay, I hear you have a nice scholar. Scholar name, um, identify yourself and then give us a name. My name is Abaka Hello. Hello. Your name and where you are calling from and then give us a name. name. I'm going to and I'm calling from Tamale. Okay, so we have a friend from Tamale. Go ahead, answer. Five chloroquine. One chloro. Five, five chloroquine. Five chloro. Six amino. Five chloro. Ten. Six amino. Go ahead. Nine ethyl. Nine ethyl. Three, three dimethyl. Three. Three dimethyl. Go ahead. Seven methyl. Seven methyl. Okay. Go ahead. Decay. Butane. Decay. 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 Okay. So, a friend says that the name of the compound is five chloro, six amino, nine ethyl, three three dimethyl. 7 methyl decane. Okay, let's see if the name is correct. Fortunately, the name is not correct. But I tried. In fact, I like your attempt. Uh, I'll show you where you made a mistake when I'm done with the name. The name is actually 6 amino 5 chloro 3 3 4 7 9 pentamethyl. All right, on the cane. Let's see why the name. Okay, so go ahead, phone in and, and uh, identify your name, where you are calling from, and give us a name here. We are interested. Hello. Hello. Go ahead. Fire. Give okay. us a name. Joshua. You are Joshua, calling from? Tomanya. Tomanya. Joshua, go ahead. Talk to us. Six amino. Six amino. Five chloro. So I'm writing a six amino. This is an answer from Joshua. Six amino five chloro. Three nine diethyl. Three nine diethyl. Mm -hmm. Joshua, we are listening. Joshua, your confidence is going up. Be happy. What you are giving us, we are interested. It tells me you are following it. When you make a mistake, we will help you. But when you get it, I'll be so happy. I'll clap for you. Okay. Six amino. Six amino. Five chloro. Five chloro. Three nine da ethyl. Three nine da ethyl. Ethyl. Mm -hmm. Dimethyl. Decane. Which methyl? What what number do you have for the methyl? Hello, Joshua. It is three nine da ethyl. Uh huh. Three nine da ethyl. Trimethyl decay. Which one comes before the trimethyl? There's a number that should come before the trimethyl. Or oh, you missed that one. Well, so our friend Joshua also tried. Um, the answer is very close, but it's not everything. So let's attempt it. the longest and continuous carbon chain. And that means we will have this, right? All right. Okay, so this is our longest and continuous carbon chain. Let's count the number of carbons in them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Have you seen? Eleven. So we have a C eleven compound. This will be on the cane. C eleven compound is on the cane. Any other thing apart from the parent chain will be called a substituent. So we have all these are substituents. This is a substituent, and that is also a substituent. And then when you are naming it, when you are naming it, we have the metal groups. You have to name, convert, con uh, merge the names, all right, of the repeating unit. And then if you check, we have four repeating units. We have a metal, a metal, another metal, and another metal. So we have, all right, um, 
you are going to have tetra tetra methyl then you have an amine group you put them together and you arrive at the name that you gave earlier well today the time has been interesting we couldn't finish the topic is exciting and um, those of you who missed the class i will encourage you to go and watch this whole video on youtube at joy learning tv you can also assess other subjects and other topics at this uh, youtube channel at joy learning tv we took ourselves through this simple concept of nomenclature of our kings it's very very long we went through the rules we said in naming them we follow a set of laid down rules and these rules are, are proposed by the international union of pure and applied chemistry the rules are very simple you have to identify the longest and continuous carbon chain and name it as a parent chain and then you also number the carbons on the, uh, of the, on the chain so that you assign numbers to the least carbon the least substituent on them and then you also name the substituents and indicate the number of carbons all right uh, on which they are found arrange the names of the substituents if you are repeating you also you also match them then you arrange the names of the substituents on the before the name of the parent chain so just after the nomenclature we also went on to write structures from names and after writing the structures from it we went on to uses of our case we said our case are very useful when it comes to domestic fuel we can have internal combustion engines like the petrol engines we also have diesel engines we also have the aviation fuels paraffin we mentioned vaseline we mentioned lubricants and from the lubricants we did asphalt and quota these are all useful when it comes to the arcanes. We had wanted to attempt arcanes, but our time is, is done. And we meet next time. In fact, we want to use the opportunity to encourage all our viewers that work hard, learning is important. Make sure you do very well in integrated science in this upcoming YC. And we meet again. I'm George Noko, your facilitator from St. Mary's Senior High. Keep learning, and we hope to see you on the other side.